Hi. So I'd like to do a video about making the stop motion animation about making this chair. If you've not seen the previous video, you should go and watch that now because this video won't, won't make a whole lot of sense without seeing that first. So I'll put a link on the screen here and a link in the description. And this one will be about making the actual stop motion with a little bit about making the chair. So let's get started. I thought I'd talk about the equipment that I used. Um, I've got a Canon 5D Mark III, which is what I used for all the shooting in the, in the video. Um, and I've got a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which I use for most, most of the shooting. Um, I've got a 100 millimeter macro lens for doing close-up shots. So some of the shots on the bandsaw and the lathe were, were done, done with this. One of the things that makes this all possible is having a remote trigger release. So I don't, don't have to touch the camera to take a picture. When the scene's all set up, you can't jiggle the camera even a tiny bit or it, it throws off the scene. This one's really nice in that there's no cord. It's all through the air. So when, when I've got a really big scene set up, I don't have to walk back to the camera to, to press the button. I, I just fire it. I can get, you know, all the way back here and take a picture. I could go out on the lawn and, and still shoot, shoot the camera in here. So, and I have an old tripod that I got about 15 years ago at a garage sale. And what's nice about it is it's just really simple. It, it doesn't have any of the new, newer stuff on it. One of the nicest things is the, the plate that the camera sits on is small enough that if the battery runs out, I can change the battery in the camera. There's nothing in the way. As far as lighting goes, for the most part, I used the lighting in the shop. Um, in, a, in a few spots, I, I do have a cheap stand light that I can put on different scenes and get them lit, lit the way that I want them lit. For sound, I have a little handheld voice recorder, which works pretty well, but prob probably the one thing that I need to upgrade is my, my sound equipment. <laughs> I did a storyboard for the whole piece, and this helped with planning and laying out the structure for the whole animation. But I found that for each scene, I really worked those out as I did them. I, I found that when I was presented with, with each shot that I had to do, it was, it, it was sort of nicer to just figure that out in place, and that seemed to work. In the first scene, I had always had this metaphor in my head that the chair was a striped towel draped over something, draped over a chair or draped over a fence, but a striped towel. So I, I did a time lapse of the towel over the first chair, and that seemed too literal. And I did a, some shots down at the park near our house of a towel draped over a fence, but that seemed too abstract. So I just took a plain straight wooden chair and put it in the backyard with the towel draped over it, and then had the towel sort of blow away. The thought behind that scene is that that's the inspiration for the chair. With the shot where I'm cutting the wood with the chainsaw, I made a jig for the camera that I attached to the ceiling. That let me shoot straight down onto the saw. In the first version of this, I had the saw sliding on the top of the wood, but that didn't make as much sense. So I, I set it up more like how the saw actually would, would work through the lumber. So I, I would move the saw, move the chain a little bit, take a picture. Move the saw, move, move the chain a little bit, take a picture. So the saw is not actually on. In the scene where the wood's moving through the lawn, this was conceptually very easy, but physically hard, because I had to actually move these pieces of wood just a little bit between e each photo. I made some two by four feet for them to sit on so that they wouldn't tip over. Those are screwed into the side of the piece of wood. And then you can see in the final version, I took those out, and I took those out in Photoshop with the clone tool, which was really easy, because I could find a section of very, very similar texture in the grass and the wood, and take those wood feet out. Where the wood comes into the shop, 
I had cleaned up the stairs into the shop, and then I realized that I really should animate that. So I sort of dumped that back out again and made a mess of wood, just so I could clean it up on camera. In the scene with the circular saw, this is the first scene where I was actually cutting the piece of wood as I was animating the movement. In the scene with the line running across the wood, I just drew the line longer and longer between each frame. Although one thing I did was to redraw the entire line every time. Where, where the line was already drawn was getting thicker and darker. I, I think this helped make the line look like it was growing across the piece of wood. In the scene with the radial arm saw, this was similar to the circular saw where I was actually doing the cutting and taking the frames at the same time. Now there's a little knob on the arm of the radial arm saw that'll lock the blade in place. So it's, it's somewhat safe to do it this way, but I really wouldn't recommend doing, doing this. <laughs> it's not the safest way to do woodworking. The section with the joiner was similar in that it's just joining a piece of wood, but very, very slowly. <laughs> so I'd, I'd move it a little bit, take a picture, move it a little bit, take a picture. But this works just fine, because the joiner doesn't care how fast the wood's moving. So. The trick with the planer is that I really didn't have to have the planer on while I was doing the camera work. And I can just add the sound in post and make it feel like the planer's on and doing its job. When in fact I'm just moving the wood through the planer that's turned off. Fr framing the shot helps a lot too. I can hold something in the air, and if I'm not in the frame, then it looks like it's floating through the air. There's a whole section that I didn't use. I had thought I would do the second chair with wider arms. And my idea was to add a piece to the top of the arm to make them wider. And the, the thought I had was to do a cove on the table saw, which I'd never done before. So it seemed like a good chance to, to try that out. So this, this cove piece ended up looking like this. And I was going to cut out the holes. and it seemed like a good idea at the time, but when I made it, it just it doesn't fit the language of the chair. The, the sort of the seat in the back kind of have a design language that sort of feels like bones, and then the, the sides are kind of feels like a shell structure to me, or, or, or something like that. And where, whereas this feels more architectural, like a piece of trim, it just didn't fit. So I, I didn't use it in the end. And that's all the shooting I did on the table saw didn't didn't end up getting used. So, I will show it off here. Draw, drawing the lines on the wood was pretty straightforward. I had some templates cut out to use, and I, would, I was tracing those. So, I, I would trace just a little bit, and then pull the template off, and then take the picture, and then put the template back on again, and draw a little bit more, and then Pull, pull the template off and take a picture and so on and so on. So it was easy, but it took a little while. These shots on the bandsaw were pretty straightforward. I just moved the piece a little bit and took a picture and moved the piece a little bit and took a picture. And with, with the bandsaw, this is pretty, pretty easy and pretty safe because it's not going to kick the board anywhere when it's just sitting there. For the scenes where the camera is riding around on the piece of board, I literally just put the camera down on the piece of wood. It's not mounted there or anything. But the, the cut is smooth enough that the camera didn't jiggle and move on the piece of wood, so it actually worked really well. And it actually came out smoother than I thought it was going to. Also, as a note here, I was only photographing a few of the pieces that I needed for the movie. I would cut most of the pieces on the project in the normal way, at the normal speed, without photographing them. But that also mean I meant I would shoot a scene and then have to go in and look at it and make sure it worked out okay before I moved on to cut out the rest of the pieces. For the close-up shot of the blade, I just used my close-up lens and got that scene. 
and it went pretty fast because I didn't have to move out of the way really. I could just push a little bit and then take a picture and push a little bit and take a picture. But the scene where the chips are building up, I saved the chips in my shop vac and then I put them in a box and I could just dump them onto the floor slowly taking a picture between each each time I put a few more chips on the floor. And the, the sound was similar. I just picked up a few chips and I made the sound of the chips falling. For the shot with the compass was really straightforward, but what I had to do is take my hand out in Photoshop. So I've got a really quick technique of taking a base image or a, a shot that doesn't have my hand in it or the moving object. And I can put that on top of the frame I'm working on and make two layers and then make a mask for the base image and then I can basically draw a mask which is sort of a frame through the image I'm working on to make a piece of the base image show up in the frame that I'm working on. So I can mask out the part that moves which is the compass and then draw over my hand And now I have a window, so to speak, which is the mask and the frame I'm working on. And I put those two together and I get an image without my hand in it. And then I can flatten that and save and move on to the next one. So in this scene, I had about 45 frames to do and it took a little bit more than an hour to do all those. For the lathe work was was again simple but but took a while so I had to cut a little bit off take a picture cut a little bit off take a picture and I was doing a, a simple spindle so this really wasn't too hard and I just did one of the spindles this way of the three so the two that I didn't do this way went quickly this was the actual glue up I didn't have time to do the gluing and the animating at the same time. I find that sound makes all the difference. And it's really just a matter of matching movement in the visuals with a sound. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the same sound that that movement makes. For the final scene, I shot a bunch of time-lapse shots and sort of picked the ones I liked. But it was fairly easy because I just had to set the camera up and let it run and then see what I got. That's a good bit of what went on doing the stop motion for the chair. I hope it was informative. Thanks for watching.